Hey everybody, welcome back to Roosters on Olentangy River Road. This is the Letterman Lounge. This is Letterman Live brought to you by Roosters. It's a fun, casual joint, and this is a fun, casual conversation. Jay-Z is back. <clears throat> He's digging into back. Arnold Palmer. Yeah, the, and I, got, I didn't get all the sweet teas and stuff, though. I got the unsweet. I was you trying to be healthy? No, well, okay. I didn't know. It's a, it's a rough, uh, <laughs> sure it's a mistake. It's a rough first sip, you know, when you think you're getting some and you're, ah, you're you're not, not all the sugar. All right, we'll have, have to sure. get someone out here to <laughs> switch it up. Get some, yeah, yeah, maybe. some more help. Uh, yeah. Michael Bennett, and for the first time, hey, we don't have to take this picture now. Yeah. He's been, <laughs> been saying all year. Well, I've been telling him I'm going to put my picture in there because he I'm here it, every week. He brought it a couple weeks ago. Oh, it's up there still, maybe. All right, so. And I put it on the shelf. The national champion is in the house, and we could actually. So this actually belongs here now. Yes, he's part of the Letterman Road yeah, crew. I guess. He's, Craig, Gosh. thanks for coming to hang out with us, man. Hope I'm glad to be a, here. A great uh, holiday season and a great year covering the watching the Buckeyes. The Sugar Bowl is here. The college football playoff. I, hey, the two of us. We've sat here. We've talked about this. We didn't know if we'd get to this point. Jay Z. Mm. We've had to have conversations about <laughs> the virus, and oh, scheduling, and I, I can't even think about all the stuff that we were dealing with. In July and August, we didn't. Yeah. We got to this point. We're here. It's Ohio State Clemson. It's the game that we all wanted. Um, we're yeah. going to get to see two two Titans go at it on Friday night. I can't wait. Well, you know, <clears throat> just it was such a weird doing these podcasts through the whole thing was so hard. I mean, kudos to you and, and the guys for for keeping it going because every week it's just like we're talking football, but if COVID <laughs> happens, we yeah. can't. You know, like it was just a lot of that. So it's been it's been great to actually be able to talk a lot. You know, about the games and about the season, um, and then. We're here at the end, and we get the matchup we wanted, right? If we if we just said, "Hey, we're going into this year, we want to get back to play Clemson again in the playoffs," everybody would have said, "Sign me up." And uh, here we are, and it's just weird. It stinks for the guys. They're flying down Thursday. They don't get the week, you know, because that's a fun time for these college kids, you know, the players to be able to go and do a bowl event for the week and, and be around and see all the different things. But uh, you know, they're stayed home from their people on Christmas, or you know, they stayed together, not trying to make sure that it happens. And we just hope they put a game together because. They haven't this year, so <laughs> let's uh, keep our fingers crossed, right? Yeah, I was talking to Craig before we before we started. Like, all right, I would normally already be in New Orleans. The team would already mm -hmm. be there. You guys would have had a you know a dinner. You'd have gone you know whoever wherever. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what you guys did in in 2014, Mike. But you know it's just it's so bizarre, and they're treating it like a normal road game. They're staying all the way up until Thursday, 3:30. I mean that's that part of it. I don't know. You maybe you make too much out of these games, but sometimes you guys have all been in it. Maybe you get more out of just that being together for a week and uh, going through the practices and getting treating it like a big game. Craig, how do you how do you think that this will work for Ohio State when they're just going down and it's a sugar bowl, it's a college football playoff, and it's like they're going to Purdue? Well, and I think that's the key to it, right? And obviously because of COVID, uh, they're going to be – they're making this decision to try to minimize any exposure and keep guys out of establishments and restaurants and other places if you go to some other town and you're going to want to get out and see the sites. Mm -hmm. So – um, obviously, we know that's why they're doing it. You know, I think at the end of the day, though, this is what they do. This is what this is what these guys are used to every single week when they have to go on the road. And uh, you know, I mean, we we've gone out to. I remember my <laughs> freshman year. I think it was we went out to UCLA, or my sophomore, my redshirt freshman year. Maybe we went out to UCLA, and we took one extra day. You know, that was just because of time change yeah. and going cross country. Uh, you know, I I don't think that's going to have any impact. Uh, on the football game you know there's going to be a lot of other things that we're going to need to talk about <laughs> mm -hmm. that's going to uh you know impact what's the final score at the end of that game friday night um, but i don't think going down thursday or being out there for a week or anything like that's going to be the difference like nobody went out on bourbon street in 14 did <laughs> of course not <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, right you know like you said we get a week and everybody wants to see the sights and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff nobody went out partying on bourbon street but there were plenty of troops. I nobody, that's gonna well, nobody that's going to play. Nobody that's going to play goes out partying. Somebody but these young cats are going to be the ones that are ticked off uh, that they're yes. not down in New yeah, Orleans for a week. Or just anywhere for a week. <laughs> I had a lot of fun at the Fiesta Bowl my freshman year. <laughs> I bumped into somebody who may have hurt his shoulder in August of that year on Bourbon Street a couple times that week. But I believe it, yeah. <laughs> if you got nothing else, yeah, to, nothing do, else to do, you may as well go see the city. Um, I yeah, you can run scout team on yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> right. that's the bottom line. Fun. I'm just gonna say it. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No doubt about it. No, I think it, I think it'll really help uh, that we don't go down until later. Mm -hmm. I would argue that most coaches would prefer to keep their team, even without a pandemic, would prefer to keep their team all together in a familiar location yeah. until it's time to go do business. Usually, these bowl games are treated as a. It's not just another competition. It's a reward. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a reward for a yeah. hard-fought season, a successful season, so that week leading up to it, while it is preparation, 
Part of it is, you know, a reward. They take us to dinners or we go do something cool in the city. They give us a night off or something like that. And, you know, while Ohio State and these teams still deserve that reward for having a, a successful season, you know, you've only played six games as Ohio State. So you're okay, like, if you don't – get your whole mm-hmm. week off that you usually get. So I think it'll be good for them. I think the coaches are probably happy that they have an excuse to keep guys home for a week. Um, it'll suck for the guys to not be able to go do all that fun bowl game stuff, but they weren't going to do it if they flew out early. In well, and you got to remember, this whole year has just been so weird yeah. and so different. And I mean, everything's just been crazy. So they're just happy to be playing the game. They've been flying out the night before these games. You know, I mean – they leave at like 8 o'clock at night nowadays, right? I mean, like, yeah. we used to, like, we'd go into the Woody Hayes around 11. You know, flight leaves around 2 or 3. You know, you get in, you have dinner. These guys, I mean, it's just been different for them. So, I think they're ready for it. They're used to that and uh, just ready to compete. It'll be, yeah. it'll be good to keep that routine. Mm-hmm. As much as you can keep a routine going, especially going into these big games, yeah. uh, that'll be a bonus for them. And they are going to do one thing that's a little bit different than what they've done for the last couple road games, which – the reason that they were doing it that way, flying out late on Friday night, was because they were going to places like Michigan State, and when they were planning to do that at Illinois, they weren't going to be able to meet. Mm-hmm. Uh, when they so when yeah, they, the, the, the conferences are conference shut down, the rooms are shut down. Yeah. Allow them to do that, so they wanted to f- have a full Friday. They wanted to have all their normal meetings, walkthroughs, and then get there. Okay, well, if you can't meet, you're basically going straight to the room. There's no advantage to landing at four o'clock mm-hmm. and then sending those guys off, you know, for the rest of the night. This week. You know, my understanding is that they will arrive in New Orleans on Thursday at 3.30. They are going to have a walkthrough in the Superdome. You wouldn't yeah. want to go into that. It's a, it's going to be a very weird atmosphere. Anytime you go into that building, it's going to be different. You're not used to playing in the domes. Michael, you've mm-hmm. done it. Um, also, that will be super strange that there's 3,000 people inside it. <laughs> it's very different than when you were there. But th- So that's the one thing that will be different. They're not going to go straight to the hotel room the way that they did at Michigan State. I don't know how big of a deal that is or isn't, but – you know, Clemson, for example, is going to go do a big dinner with the Sugar Bowl on Wednesday. Uh, I understand they're going to go to a movie theater, which is a strange choice when you're going to a bowl game and dealing with all these things. But, you know, that's – everybody's different with how they've yeah. handled it. If Clemson well, – Every you know, part of the country is different in how they've kind of handled exactly. it, right? Down south, they kind of are just moving along. I mean, Clemson's going to have less fans in the stands for this game than they <laughs> than they did for the regular season, how right? How weird is that? I mean, so at least Ohio State's saying, we haven't had anybody, mm-hmm. you know, except our parents in the Big Ten Championship. So it's going to be maybe uh, something that benefits us a little bit more. All right, well, let's talk about those benefits or the advantages because a lot of them I think you could make a case either way, um, especially about this. You know, Michael, you brought it up beforehand, the six games. Dabo has brought this up a lot, almost every single day for the last two <laughs> you weeks. You don't say. So, yeah. <laughs> He's brought up a lot of things a lot of times. But this one, I mean, Ohio State's clearly not played their best game. They've rarely had a chance to get into any sort of rhythm. You're looking at you know, Indiana, Michigan State, Northwestern, they played three times in, what, seven weeks? Yeah. No football player wants that. No. No, I – you know, the, it has its advantages. It has its disadvantages. Like, obviously, the stuff that Dabo's saying has some merit to it. But obviously he's also Which not going to – about how you're going to be fresh. These guys are going to be fresh. Um, they're probably going to be fresher than Clemson. I don't know how much. It's not like, you know – I mean, they still played football. They still have been going through some practices. They're not going to be, you know, at their peak performance. But there also is that disadvantage of, one, you've seen guys who needed those games mm-hmm. to reach their potential. Trey Sermon, <laughs> I mean, obviously he needed four or five games yeah. to figure out how to play in the Big Ten and how he wanted, you know, apparently, you know get his knee back. And then on top of that, there is this, like, I don't know how to describe it, that you're trying to get your players to peak at a specific time. And these players or these coaches and these strength coaches have specific ways and specific routines that they have where they're expecting their players to peak in week nine or week ten so that going into bowl season for these top-tier programs, they're they're humming. And on top of that, you've got a shortened schedule when it comes to prepare for this bowl. So – Obviously, you know, Dabo's going to say what he's going to say, and, yeah, the guys are going to be a little bit healthier, but there would be plenty of coaches that would argue that um, the less uh, banging you do, your body will break down in big games just because with football, you know, you got to get hit mm-hmm. to know how to get hit. And so I think it is what it is. We got our advantages for it. We have our disadvantages. It's just whoever shows up. Greg, I, I, I think I think the – you know, if you're talking about Dabo and all the things that he's saying um, – you know, we've all seen every year in college football, you know, all but two, three, maybe four teams in a given season has one of those games. Mm-hmm. 
you just one of those games, you know, the the Cleveland Browns, New York Jets <laughs> yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. One of those games that you walk away and you just shake your head as a player, as a coach, and and, and us as fans now, you just shake your set your head and say, what the heck just happened? Mm-hmm. Right, and it happens every year. So to me, I think that's the number one point that that Dabo makes that I kind of agree with is. You, you, you remove some of those games off the schedule, and you saw a couple games this year where we didn't play well. Right. And, you know, if that happens one more time against maybe a different team, who knows what that outcome looks like. So you, you kind of just remove that probability of that one game where you played bad and, and everything just went right for that for the other team, for your opponent, mm-hmm. and you get that one L. And now you get that one L and you're outside of the top four. You know, I, I think everything else kind of counterbalances itself. You know, these guys are lacking in reps. We are not in rhythm. You know, there's no argument to that. Flip side to that is, yeah, we're healthier. We're healthier. We're more energized. We don't have the, 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 the battle of a season, you know, the fatigue, the wear and tear on the guys in the trenches and the yep. front seven on defense. You know, I think all that offsets itself. It's just that one concept of we only played six games, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So that's, that's six less games than you're accustomed to in terms of, when you have that one horrible game, you make that one key bad play at the wrong time that results in that L that keeps you out. What I, f- what I f- find most amusing, I guess, would be the word I'm going to choose about Dabo making that case is that he talked about, I think, the 2017 mm-hmm. season where that happened to Clemson and they lost to Syracuse. Well, they still got in the playoff. Like They got, a, they got yeah. excused for that. And that's like he just makes so – he says so much stuff that you can find – him counter, you know, arguing with himself. Well, he's, yeah. he's pushing his quarterback to be the Heisman when, well, he doesn't have as many games as these other guys that have. And I'm not saying that he's wrong about, you know, his principled stand here that he's trying to take, Craig. Like, it's just weird because he says so much. Mm-hmm. There's bound now, to be something. Justin there. and I were talking about it actually just earlier this morning where it's just like, if you flipped the script – what would Dabo Swinney be saying mm-hmm. right now? Yep. He knows what he would be saying. He knows. We all know what he'd be <laughs> yeah. saying. He we all it. know what he'd oh, be shucks, saying. Oh, shucks. We got one of the best <laughs> games know, in America. Yeah. Yeah. He knows and, what games he's doing. We, we, we won the games we're, we could play. You know, it's not, He's acting like Ohio State just said, all right, we're only going to go in this season and play only six games. Like They would have much rather had a full, a full schedule. Right. You know, you know they just, it is what it is. They just asked him about it, and, and he doubled down. And he said, listen, I, I'm not saying that Ohio State can't beat all of us and win the whole thing. You know, so I, I don't mind what he's saying. Uh, you know, he, he makes valid points, but at the end of the day, um, you know, everybody needs to understand, including Dabo, it's not up to him. It's yeah. not up to Ryan Day. It's not up to these players. It was up to a committee. It was up to individual conferences. And at the end of the day, the Buckeyes went out. It wasn't always pretty. They won every game that they played. And, and you know, I, th- I, think, I think that the, the committee – made the right decision in this. When you look at this football team, are they one of the best four teams in the country? And in a season where everything's, you know, all tossed around and it's 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 just foreign territory for everybody, are the Buckeyes one of the top four teams in the country? And I think the answer is yes, even though I also, and this is what I think is exciting, I don't think we've seen them play their best mm-hmm. game. Right. And if this football team can put it together at the right time for two more games, there is no question in my mind that – we can be national champions. Mm-hmm. There's something uh, about playing Clemson that's different than, you know, we, we were hyping a top ten matchup with Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> okay. A little or, bit different. Or the, the Big Ten title game against Northwestern mm-hmm. after they lost to Michigan State. Like, you guys have all played for really, really good Ohio State teams, and I've all you've, you've all told me at various times it's much harder to get ready to play four quarters against those teams mm-hmm. than you would in a college football playoff against Clemson. So I don't know – that they're still going to have to prove it on Friday night when you get in that game. But I can understand why the second half against Rutgers wasn't perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, that maybe you get up by 28 points against Indiana and mm-hmm. take your foot off the gas. Like, I understand that. Yeah. So we haven't seen Ohio State play a four, you know, four-quarter dominant game. I don't. That doesn't mean in my mind that they can't do it when they're going to be pushed and they're going to see that orange on the other sideline mm-hmm. and see Dabo's face across the sideline. I mean – you guys know that much better than I do, but I think that's going to be a different level of motivation. So, I, I mean, a couple points. None of us here wanted to see Ohio State let up a lot of second-half points this season. 
the point you raised, yeah, like, okay, you're up 35-3 to three in the first half. Is this team really going to come back and beat you? Probably not. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to see a team that was hungry to prove how dominant they were over the rest of the Big Ten. And we didn't really get to see that for most of the games this year. Um, a, lot of go a lot goes into that, you know, because for the first four games of the year, the starters are used to playing one half of football, mm -hmm. generally. So, you know, just having to adapt to that in Big Ten play was kind of tough. I think – this the vibe going against Clemson, you know everything that every team's gone through, but everything that Ohio State's gone through this year, this is why they went through it. This is why guys went through all those restrictions to play. This is this is the whole point. You know what I'm saying? If you can't get yeah. excited against Clemson during a pandemic year when you had less games than them, you know maybe this ain't the right sport. But <laughs> so I, I think you know Ryan Day will do a great job getting the guys ready. I think the leaders on that team will do a great job getting the guys ready before the game. Um, I think the guys will come out ready to play. I really think this is one of those games, two even teams. It's just going to be uh, who shows up to play um, on Saturday or s whenever it was. Um, and, right. it, yeah, we'll see, what, we'll see what happens. But Ohio State mentally will be there. Yeah, it's going to be a different feeling when they come out in the second half and say they go up 35-7, you know, right, like they did against Indiana, you know. But this is to go play for the national championship. It's not, ah, man, we're up 35-7 on Indiana. Like, we smacked these guys. All right, what are, you gonna, you know, what are we doing later? Nothing because we're not allowed. Yeah. But <laughs> we're flying, you know, we're but but, but you have you have that feeling, you know. It's just like <laughs> I mean, well, we're up thirty five seven. There's nobody in the stands. This sucks. We're killing these guys. And then they, they were a good team and they kept fighting and they came back. But you also play a little bit differently when you're up thirty five seven, right? Yeah. You're, you don't want the big play. You don't want them to score quick, even though they probably did a couple times. But you're just a different mentality. It happens all the time in in football games, in my opinion. NFL every weekend, you have one team play really good in the first half. The other team comes right back in the game, you know. I mean, that's what we've dealt with this year. And I think the second half, not having anybody in the stands, just being up on people has been kind of like a, huh, all right, this this game's basically over. You know, we, we don't think they're going to come back and beat us. And yeah. they, they held on for dear life there a couple times. Yeah, I hope I'm wrong when I say this. I don't think we're going to have to worry about being up 35-7 no. against Clemson. Well. <laughs> like, I just – I don't know that I necessarily see that. I mean – Jay Z is very excited for Friday. <laughs> well, no, but night. but his well, point. I'm his not saying point, it was going to be 30. His so. point is is dead on. You know, there there is a motivation factor that's going to go into this game, with with Dabo saying what he's saying, mm -hmm. with what happened last year, mm -hmm. a football game that you know I don't ever say this, I don't ever ever say this, but we got screwed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, sim simply put, we should have won that football game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other thing we didn't talk about when you talk about all this stuff that Dabo's been lobbying for for weeks now. The poll. Who yeah. does he want to play? Mm. He doesn't want to play us. <laughs> if you said, Texas hey, Dabo, yeah. Yeah. Texas A&M, Florida, Ohio State, Cincinnati. obviously Notre Dame, Cincinnati, yeah, yeah. who do you want to play? Uh, I don't want to play Ohio State. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you I just, don't want to play Ohio State. Just remove one of those options and yeah. then pick the rest. I think you'd play any of the other teams. Gosh, I don't yeah. think there's any question. Yeah. And that's like, what it that, all started out as, and they just yeah. had to double down because mm -hmm. he started – and his, you know, fortunately for us, his lobbying didn't work. No, yeah, yeah. his lobbying that, didn't work because nobody's listening to Dabo anymore because he flipped <laughs> yeah. the zones. Well, yeah. But this is going to be a great opportunity for this football team to to show their maturity. It has been. I mean, it's been. You talk about only playing six games. You know, there's a, an immense challenge in that. You're prepping for a team, and then boom, Thursday you're not playing. Yeah. I mean, the emotional, right? The 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 mental challenge of all right, who's next? And you don't even get to play. You don't even get to break down. Come in on Sunday and watch film from that Saturday. Yeah. And people don't realize, you know, the ups and downs of a season. How much you get better in those film sessions? Because the only way you get better is making mistakes, learning from them, visualizing, and and moving forward. Yeah. We, we haven't had that opportunity this year. You know, so that there's going to be components to that that we're going to be lacking. You know, that's obviously on the negative side of only playing six games. And with that, you know, these guys have an opportunity to come out and show uh, how they can overcome that and how mature is this football team. How good are they? They, could, they have a chance to come out and say. Yeah, the talent is yeah. there. There's no question. You know, you look at those guys up front on offense. You look at our skilled position players. The, the, we Everywhere. always have talent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's not the problem at Ohio State, <laughs> right? There's always that little something. Is it X's and O's? Is it coaching? Is it play calling? Is it catching a break at the right time? Mm -hmm. And then always, every single season, it's maturity. Yeah. It's how do these guys prep? How do they focus? How can they deal when they get punched in the face? Because it's going to happen. There's no question about it. All right. They're, uh, they're going to throw some punches of their own on Friday night. I'm sure about that. <laughs> we have a lot more to talk about for Ohio State and Clemson. We're going to take a quick break. Right here at Roosters, we'll be back to keep breaking down the Buckeyes and Tigers. All right, taking a quick break, but really this is the main part of the show when Nicole Cox joins us. And 
Uh, we couldn't have Letterman live without her, and we certainly couldn't do it uh, during the week of the college football playoff and, and the Sugar Bowl without bringing in Nicole, uh, especially with the way that she predicted the way this whole season, all the games all throughout the season, the analysis. So Nicole's joining us. Uh, it's the holidays. Everybody's scattered around the country. She's popping in for her analysis and predictions and to let us know uh, what you can do to get ready for game day on Friday. Nicole, thanks for popping in, as always, for joining us on Letterman Live. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And yes, we are so excited for the game on Friday. And um, Roosters is open normal hours, which is great. Um, and so people can call in for carryout or you can dine in with us, whichever you prefer. So um, yeah. Got to be prepared for a big game. There's no better way to do it than with uh, Roosters. And if you, you know, need to load up and take it home to go, 8 p.m. kickoff, got plenty of time to be in. I'm sure we'll have yes. some of our game day posters to pick up as well one day early. Yes. So get, get all that, get all your supplies for Ohio State and Clemson, which is a game that's going to come down to what, Nicole? What are you watching uh, on the field on Friday night? So I'm, I'm super pumped for this game since we didn't have a game this past weekend. But um, I think it's really, the more I thought about it, I think it's really going to depend on the defensive line. I think they're going to have to be ready to put pressure on Trevor Lawrence. I mean, he is – He's a great quarterback. Obviously, Justin Fields is amazing as well. But um, they need to stop him from passing it through the middle um, because that will take some pressure off the defensive backs as well. But I think Haskell Garrett and Toby Togiai are playing at all-American Amer all caliber. Yeah. And so I think if our team can just be together and, you know, put their best foot forward, I, we, I think it's going to be close. But I really feel good about this game. Yeah, we got Mike Bennett over here. He'll he'll be relieved to hear about those couple All American honors that Haskell Garrett has picked up the last couple weeks. He uh, deserves them. Oh my gosh, Haskell Garrett absolutely deserves it. it. Watching it has been a lot of fun watching him this season, just grow and everything he's been through. I'm glad that he has received the acknowledgement of first team um, through some media outlets. He deserves yeah. it. Uh, incredible. I mean, we've talked about it throughout this year. Just the fact that he's alive is an achievement in itself. Oh, you absolutely. Know, but the way he's played, even if you set that aside, just an incredible story for him. Uh, you touched on on Justin Fields as well, Nicole. I mean, that guy. We've seen this before. You know, a couple games. You you brought this up with me last week. The Indiana game, the Northwest Northwestern game. The way that teams have been blitzing that Ohio State offensive line, and maybe Harry Miller in particular at left guard. Justin Fields is going to need some time to throw. You know that Clemson and, and Brent Venables, their defensive coordinator, you know that they're going to come up with something, and they've seen that from some other games, that really the only chance you have against Ohio State is if you can blitz and get some success against it. Yes, Clemson is known for their, you know, exotic plays. They're a talented team, and yes, our O-line needs to be ready. They need to protect Justin so he can do his job and get it down the field to, you know, the Chris Olaves and Garrett Wilsons and – so we can score and hopefully <laughs> have um, more points than yeah. Clemson. Yeah. And not some points that the uh, officials can take away this year. We're not going to have that conversation uh, this time exactly. for the Sugar Bowl. All right, I know you've, you've had an extra week now to cook up uh, your plan. This is a rare opportunity for Ohio State as an underdog, six-and-a-half-point underdog to Clemson this week. They've been pretty good when they've not been favored. So you've cooked up your score numbers. What have you got for us on Friday night? So I think it's going to be 23-29 Buckeyes. Ooh, all right. I know. I really I, – I, after, like, researching and looking at it, now if you remember that was last year's score, except it was flip-flop. So I'm going to say it's the Buckeyes, 23-29 Buckeyes. Okay, Nicole's got some revenge on her mind. She even wants the scoreboard to reflect it. Uh, what else uh, leading up to game day do people need to know what's going on at Roosters to close out 2020? Yes, so we are still having our gift card promotion, which is buy $50, get $10 and a bonus buck back through December 31st. And yes, we're just ready for 2021 and a huge thanks to all of our guests and you guys just for everyone's support. We are just beyond grateful. All right, hopefully we get through this. We'll uh, be down there in New Orleans for the rest of the week. The Letterman Row crew will be to cover the game and then back here next Monday. Uh, maybe talking about a victory yes. in the next game, the national championship. Talking game. about a victory, Austin. We will be talking <laughs> about a victory. Well, you said it, and you predicted it, so we know that it's good. We'll be back for Letterman Live next week, and hopefully we'll be done with Zoom for a long time to come on this yes. show as well. All right, that's Thanks Nicole. so much, Austin. That's Nicole Cox. Happy New Year. Uh, you'll be back with us soon enough. I know it. Back to the show.
All right, welcome back to Letterman Live. It's Sugar Bowl week. Mike is digging into the pizza. We've got – I can't believe Schlegs is missing it. Tomorrow is Mac and Cheese Bites, $2 mm. appetizers on Tuesdays. $2 Make $2 sure that you get that. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do. I guess we're just going to have to pull the weight for Schlegs and eat these Mac yeah, and Cheese Bites. Yeah, I know, bites yeah. Ourselves okay. this week. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know. If you insist. Krenzel's getting the salad. I don't, I'm not yeah, sure he's, he's got the message about what we're supposed to do here. I try to tell him on the way down, you know, don't be eating that green stuff. But well, here, I mean, he's two things. He's trying, to be, he's two trying things. to be healthy. Two things. Three <laughs> things then. Number one, trying to be healthy. All right? <laughs> <laughs> Number two, I mean, look at this salad. It the is bacon, a good salad. I'm not going to lie to you. Blue cheese. And if you've had the Red Rooster dressing, you know what I'm talking okay. about. Yeah. It's an amazing salad. And, it, I mean, I've already had a mac and cheese bite, a mozzarella stick. I'm definitely going to dive into some of them boneless wings there down there. Mm-hmm. Don't fool yourself. This right. is just, <laughs> just trying to fill the tank a little bit. Okay. I respect it. I just want to make sure you're taking care of business, Craig, because that's <laughs> that's all the fun of this show. Yes. And I, didn't, I didn't know if it was like what Bennett was doing early on when he came in and would order the just salad shy. and then just eat my potato sauce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was, I thought, yeah, he was just putting it up there. Austin's awesome going sauce home. His wife's like, where's the potato skins? <laughs> Mike the, Bennett orders a salad and he eats my potato skins every week. It's for you the camera. The salad. There you go. <laughs> it's for the camera. When yeah. you turn that camera <laughs> off, yeah. I'm going to be just shoving it all in my face. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Uh, we appreciate uh, Nicole Cox for stopping in uh, virtually this week oh, to yeah. give us you know, her prediction for Ohio State. She's got the Buckeyes winning 29-23 on oh. Friday night. We'll get to ours a little bit later on. Now we need to talk about how the Buckeyes might get to that point. And with two quarterbacks in the house, there's nowhere else to start than this matchup. We've seen it before. Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields, these guys have gone head-to-head on the field. They've gone back to recruiting and elite 11s, and they are two of the best passers that you're ever going to find. And if you're going to win a championship, you're going to need a quarterback to lead the way. Uh, Craig, you know that, of course. Um, what does Justin Fields need to do? The last couple weeks, not been his finest efforts. What's What are you seeing from him? Uh, and what is he going to face against Clemson in this rematch? Uh, well, first of all, um, you know, a couple questions there. Uh, first of all, I, I don't really even – I don't even pay attention to last week. Uh, you know, I think people have have discounted too much what it's like as a quarterback when you go into a game and your guy's not there. Yeah. You know, two of your guys aren't there. Yeah. You know, well, obviously one of them being a younger guy, um, extremely talented, but a younger guy that you've – you know, you've, you've got your time with this season – but then when you look at Chris Olave, when your guy, you know, I, I think back, and if, if I went into a game and Michael Jenkins wasn't on the field, that guy where you knew where he's going to be every moment, every play, you're on the same page, what route. Trust. You know, uh, yeah, that trust factor. You know, there's so much that goes into it. Um, you know, I, I think we've discounted that a little bit. Now, don't get me wrong. And Justin tr- Fields had to play better. offense, that wouldn't have worked. Yeah, it Justin, Fields, Justin Fields needs to play better. You know, he did not play well against Northwestern. There's no question about that. You know, but but there's this 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 game's going to have a whole different vibe. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what's he going to be seeing? He's going to be seeing uh, you know probably the best defense he's seen all year. That's the, that's the negative part of of your question <laughs> in the comment. You know, a very young but very talented defensive front uh, on the Clemson defensive line. But um, you know, once again, it goes back to maturity. You know, this this he he was. Number one recruit in the country, okay, transfers, played, obviously had a fantastic season this year, or last year rather. This year, you know, it's just a different season, Mm -hmm. and we've talked about that. So now it's how focused is he going to be? How much prep is he going to put in there? He's he's obviously got the ability. I mean, there's no question with that. And we talked earlier – we got the guys on the edge, and and Trey Sermon, and and what he's shown in the backfield, uh, the weapons that he has at his disposal. I think Justin Fields just needs to go out there, not press, and just go play his brand of football, which is obviously a really, really good brand of football, <laughs> and it's more than good enough to win this football game. Jay Z, have you seen him pressing? Is that what? I, I I think he, in my opinion, I think he's just become a little gun shy. I think he had his week against Indiana where, well, what happened? This guy threw three interceptions, uh, you know, because we hadn't – that that was his total last year um, in, uh, in that category. And, and I think he just became a little gun shy. I, I think there's been plays where it looked like number two was open. And you know what? Uh, he just wanted to – you know, he want, he started to rely more on his feet to make a play or, you know, to get out of the box just to see, see things better instead of just ripping it and letting it go. Um, now that might have to do with guys that are missing – you know, a lot of different things can go into it. Um, I hope 
and I'm, and last that last game against Northwestern, I don't think did him any favors in the confidence category, um, just because he's been hearing about how the offense didn't look great. They had to run Trey Sermon in the second half to get back in the game, and I hope they're doing a great job with him and just prepping one and just saying, you just play your game. You know, they're almost just talking to him. Like, don't even worry about this. You got it. Yeah. You know, the first four games of the year, you had two inter, you know, two incompletions. For, you know, I know there's more than that, but, yeah. like, you have it in you. Trust it. Trust your eyes. Trust your feet. Trust your receivers are going to make those plays for you. you. Throw an interception, you throw an interception, but you can't be gun shy, and you, you just got to let it rip, especially in a game like this where – that, that's how quick it is. If you hold it for that little, that, that secondary is going to be there, or that defensive line is going to get that hand on the ball, or you know something back can happen. So you got to trust it, and you just got to go into it with, with the attitude of, I'm a gunslinger. I, but if something bad happens, quarterback memory, it's out. I'm going to the next play, and you just got to roll with it. Greg, you got something? Yeah, I, I think I think the biggest thing is he's going to have his guys back, and 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 you, when you look back against Michigan State. He had three guys out up front. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want to talk about – it's one thing to not have your timing with the guys that you're throwing the football to, but you want to talk about a way to get into a quarterback's head because, you know, we're all mentally weak, and that's just just part of the position. But you want to talk about – Strong and weak at the same time. You want to talk about a way to get in – it's like, all right, I got to trust these guys up front. I don't even know what they're going to do. Right. And, and it's not just did he drop it, did he catch it, was he in the right spot. It's am I getting drilled or am I not? Am I going to have time or am I not? You know, so you look at these last two games, and obviously look at me over the quarterback, defending the quarterback, <laughs> but there, there's so much that goes into the – I mean, I think that uh, uh, the quarterback position is one of the most vulnerable positions in all of sports because of the trust and and what you have to rely on and the other 10 guys from a timing standpoint from your guys up front actually providing protection you know and and I think and hope like Justin said that going into Friday night there's going to be an inherent boost in his confidence just from the fact that he knows at least as of today <laughs> you know yep. we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day or who might yep. may or may not be out but as of today we got everybody yeah. He's got his. He's going to battle with the guys that he wants to battle with. I can just feel the heat rising for Michael Bennett with all this quarterback talk over here. <laughs> <laughs> I, so the only thing that worries about worries me about <clears throat> Justin Fields going into this game is I saw against Rutgers and in Indiana that they still haven't really figured out how to handle these blitzes, mm-hmm. and that Clemson is very very good at blitzing. Not only do they have a strong front four. They always have good linebackers, and they always have a good defensive scheme. They're going to give us weird blitzes, and those blitzes are going to come at you fast. And if Justin hasn't figured out yeah. how to handle that pressure, how to escape the pocket, I remember I think it was the Rutgers game when you would see when they would do that uh, view from behind the quarterback, you could see three linebackers crisscrossing across his face, and he stood in the pocket. Like, that should be your first indicator. I'm sure, I don't know what you guys look at as quarterbacks, but if I'm, I'm assuming if you see three linebackers – Blitz in different gaps, you're rolling out because yeah. you know someone's going to come. Well, you're either that or you're replacing them, getting rid of the yeah, ball quick. The it's all about it's all about yeah. the play. But you're not yeah, standing yeah, exactly. there looking yeah. for a forty yard run. Which that's one thing he's done a lot. I, I would say is he's confident enough in himself to stand in the pocket, mm-hmm. but he doesn't. I don't know he if that, that internal blitzes. clock maybe isn't as as on as it needs to be. All right, man, I'm, man, I'm standing here for a little bit longer yeah. than I should be. I mean, it happens to all quarterbacks. Baker Mayfield did it yesterday at the end of the game. Like, what do you get rid of the ball? Like, you're, you're sitting there, sitting there, sitting there. These guys aren't stopped. Yeah, Clemson They're, will heat you up. Yeah, exactly, no doubt. And I don't I don't mean to say this as a way to make excuses for the games where Justin Fields has not been perfect, but when you guys are talking about, you know, adjusting to different blitzes or if Chris Olave's out and then the offensive line for Michigan State is patchwork. Sometimes it's easy to forget because he was so freaking good last year that he started for one year, and this year has been the strangest year of all time. Mm-hmm. He's played six games, and two of them you could basically just scrap yeah. because of how strange they were. He's not. We're not talking oh. about like a ten-year NFL. I was about to say, here. like, yeah. listen. The only if we had, you know, if, if we're we picking on Illinois, little things yeah, because we had because some the guy Illinois quarterback nobody's going to be like, oh, why is he not picking up blitzes and rolling out at the perfect yeah. time? Why is he throwing more than two incompletions a game? This is Justin Fields. That's what happens when you have a great yeah. year. Is people expect you to have another great year? And so you know, none of this is like, oh, I think he's a bad guy no, or I, mean, I don't gosh, think he's he good. Still it's just over seventy percent completion percent. Yeah. I mean, like that's a good, that's good. <laughs> you know, you I just read something today where it was like seventy percent of his passing yards. 
all came before the catch. Yeah. So the guy can he can deal. He yeah. can get the ball downfield. He can put it anywhere downfield. He can spread the whole thing out. And we just – you got a nitpick, and that's just what happens. But I mean, if you want to beat out a Trevor Lawrence, if you want to win a shootout with Trevor Lawrence in a Clemson defense, these are the things that you have to do. You have to be like, yeah, okay, it's fine if he isn't able to pick up blitzes. We won't win because that's what they're going to do to us all game. When you have a great quarterback, yeah. I would expect us to blitz Trevor Lawrence because mm -hmm. that's how you rattle great quarterbacks. And Justin Fields is a great quarterback, and Clemson is uh, more than capable of putting together a defensive yeah. scheme – Oh. To at least confuse him or pressure him, and he's going to be able. He's going to have to really dig deep and be able to handle that kind of pressure. I mean, that DC is probably what one of the longest tenured yeah. assistants in America, certainly right? Certainly the highest paid. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Venables. I mean, he's yeah. probably making a few couple mil, and he's he's been there for ten years or so. It's crazy, I mean, like it's, Brent it's Venables is crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you know yeah, but, he's going to have. Something. But the thing about the pressure, so a quarterback's worst nightmare is pressure with four. Worst nightmare. Mm -hmm. There's no question. There's still seven guys playing coverage behind mm -hmm. it. You know, the zones aren't there, uh, and, and you're still getting pressure. So from a from a them bringing linebackers or secondary, you know, I, Justin Fields, I think he's proven he's smart enough. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's just can you trust his guys up front? Yeah. Is the timing going to be there going back to we've only played six games? Right, like going back to that concept of what is it going to look like for this football team, and what is that experience going to be? Uh, Trevor Lawrence is going to be the number one pick in the NFL draft. I want Justin Fields going into this game. I think there's going to be plays in this football game that he's going to make that we're just going to look at and say, "How does that dude make that play?" Mm -hmm. And a lot of that, he was he had Ohio State in position to win. We've we've talked about this a hundred times with the Fiesta Bowl. You look back at that game. He was good enough to beat Clemson with one healthy leg. Mm -hmm. So if he's got that knee at full strength and no got, brace, yeah. there were opportunities to make plays, and Trevor Lawrence got to do that last year to Ohio State using his legs. You know, you're, you can only take away so much at a time. Justin Fields. Don't forget those extra opportunities that Trevor Lawrence <laughs> had too. Now, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I, we're, I don't want to go too far into it and get worked up again <laughs> yeah. about what happened. That was one year ago to the Start day. Sweating. So we're just gonna. <laughs> I don't want to do that again. But anyway, that's you know. I th the thumb, I don't think that's going to be an issue for Justin Fields. He doesn't have to have the knee brace. He's going to be able to run, <laughs> and that's a big – you guys have talked about, is he doing it too early? Is he running too much? I mean, you're going to have to do whatever you can do yeah. to win this game against yeah. Clemson. And it helps, as Michael Bennett knows, that Trey Sermon – is a truly elite well, running back. As, as he's Eddie George. Well, <laughs> <laughs> right? Is that what he's turned into? <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, a couple weeks ago, I finally conceded, you know, oh, right. oh, Austin Jason. maybe knew what he was oh, talking Jason about. He hasn't been around for a couple I weeks. haven't been around. <laughs> but he had a game. And, you know, and the crazy thing is when you start talking about quarterbacks, you know, bringing us in on Justin, yeah. I thought to myself, I don't know if we want him winning the game for us. After the way Trey Sermon looked, I mean, that does a couple things, right? You get your run game going, you're – not putting the ball in the air, bad things don't happen, and you're eating clock up. Mm -hmm. You're keeping Clemson off the field. Maybe that's the way. I mean, we saw last year in the first half, right? I mean, J.K. was going off, yeah. which it only makes it easier on the quarterback, going play action downfield for bigger plays. So, I mean, maybe that's something where Trey Sermon, I mean, let's hope that he has well, a game like he's had and, look, when and we what were, he's looked like. And when we were talking about Indiana uh, – I mean, they, they obviously had a ton of blitzes that they threw at him in that game, and he struggled. Mm -hmm. I felt like that was the first time you watched Justin Fields, and he felt the pressure that he had to win. Mm -hmm. And part of that is because, what, you're dealing with an inconsistent Master Teague, and to that point, Trey Sermon was not running that way. Mm -hmm. We were asking, where's the rushing game? Like, yeah. Are they going to yeah. be able to do what they need to do? I think this is different. Justin Fields should know in this game, because what you just saw from Trey Sermon, what you saw from the offensive line when it was back together, and what you know you can get from Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson, if all those pieces are out there, Justin Fields doesn't have to win the game by himself. Mm -hmm. yeah. He just doesn't. You know, Having this conversation and talking about what Trey Sermon has done the last couple of weeks, uh, put yourself in Brent Venable's shoes right now. What are you preparing for? Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what, what are you yeah. preparing for? Yeah. Uh, I mean, is Justin Fields going to be throwing the ball downfield? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is, are they going to try to pound it at us with Trey Sermon? Yes. Because what you know on the defensive side, what a lot of people don't realize, you know, there's there's pass blitzes and run blitzes, yep. and you get caught in the wrong pressure. You know, everyone gets fearful. It's like, oh, they're going to bring the house, and Justin Fields has to get rid of the football. And there's going to be times when there's no question that is true, but there's also going to be times they bring this pressure, and we're running zone or we're running, you know, counter the other way, and Trey Sermon's gone. Yep. Seventy yards later, touchdown because. Wrong. 
they guess wrong, Mm -hmm. we guess right, however you want to put it. So if you're Brent Venables right now and you're looking at this season, you only have six games to prepare for. You only have two where they're running the football down people's throats against, you know, Northwestern was – you know, I forget what their defense was right. They're in the top twenty, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean against right? the run, yeah, and then you know three hundred and carry yeah, yeah. three hundred and twenty whatever yards late. I mean, what are you preparing for? I mean, there's there's a question mark in there that I think it helps this Buckeye offense in its entirety, but also Justin Fields in terms of you know, maybe keeping some of that pressure off, or when they do bring that pressure, keeping them honest and popping a big run. You know, there's that makes a defensive coordinator really shake his head and say, all right, what do we do next? When that when that run exactly what you've been saying when that run game is hitting, it opens up the entire offense. Um, I don't know. I mean, you guys know better than me what kind of like mentality that changes for the quarterback. But if you're getting a solid run game, then play action is open. And then if play action is open, I mean, you can do dropbacks, you can do rollouts, you can do whatever you want. And heck, I mean, yeah, what do we have to talk about if Trey Sermon's going to run for 300 yards? Yeah. That's, I, <laughs> yeah, no, we'll that's happily, that's happily talk about, about him running for yeah. another 300 if, yards. If he can put together half of the performance that he put up against Northwestern, then it's they are not going to be able to stop Ohio State's offense, and then it comes to the defense. Well, it, I mean, it changes everything. Think about, you know, your run in 2014, Mike. Zeke goes wild in yeah, Indy. 250-plus, right? Go to the Sugar Bowl. He builds on that. It's a postseason rampage. I know that's a, a high bar for Trey Sermon to meet, but that's that's what made the Those difference. are the expectations Zeke here at Ohio State. And, State. and, and the culmination of receivers making plays. Yeah. Right? You look yeah, at yeah. 2014, oh, I mean, and, and yeah. that playoff, man, our receivers stepped up and made plays. Right. I mean, yeah. actually, sick throws, sick yeah. catches. <laughs> you know, I mean, everything. They did everything. everything. Yeah. Um, no. yeah. All right, so let's let's get to the nitty-gritty here. Ohio State is an underdog. Mm-hmm. It's a rare opportunity. Is it seven still? I think it's six and a half or seven. Half. Um, you guys have been in that situation for these big games as well. It's mm-hmm. really rare for Ohio State to have this underdog mentality. What is it like to be in an Ohio State locker room one of these rare opportunities to prove somebody wrong. It's a Sugar Bowl. You've been in that one specifically. It's for a national title. You guys have been in that. The quarterbacks have been part of those efforts before, obviously. What is this week <coughs> going to be like with trash talk, underdog, high stakes, everything on the line? I always preferred being the underdog. Oh, gosh. Always. Um, when you go in as the one expected to win, you can. I mean, obviously, by that point, if you're expected to win these big games – you probably got a certain maturity, maturity and culture in the locker room already built. But when you go in there to, you know, give the pregame speech or how are guys feeling before the game, there's this sense of expectation that can fuel you along as long as you have a strong uh, – a mental a team that is mentally strong. When you're the underdog, there are no expectations other than knock this person off their pedestal. Mm-hmm. And especially when you're the underdog – uh, when the rest of the world sees you as an underdog, but you in the locker room are like, whoa, 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 you, you, I'm better than him. This guy's better than that guy. Like, mm-hmm. we have the people that are better than this other team. Why are people counting us out? That's nothing but fuel. Like, you could put up a whole poster on the bulletin mm-hmm. board of that stuff. So when it comes to motivating a team, you want to be the underdog. Yeah, I think it just frees teams up to go out and play. I kind of think back to when we – I don't know if it was a 15 when we lost to Michigan State, yeah. when we were supposed to have the best team ever, you know, and we lose. We were looking forward to Alabama. Yeah, well, and then, you know, it was just like the next week, man, that team looked amazing because I think that pressure just, you know, when that happens, mm-hmm. and I think the underdog stat- statue or status is kind of the same way. Like, they're going on the field. Hey, nobody expects us to win this game. We've only played – you know, you go through the list of things and the reasons why and what everybody's been talking about. And say, all right, well, let's go see. You know, let's go see if those people were right or if we are right. You know, I mean, it's just much easier to rally your guys. I think now in a game like this, if you're needing to rally your guys, you got a whole set of problems. Right. But you know what? You understand what I'm saying. Ryan Day, you saw the clip in the video after the game. He's going to yeah. use all this stuff that Dabo said that everybody else has said, and you know, that team's going to come out firing. I, I would, I wouldn't be surprised if we, if we come out hitting hard and uh, you know, take an early kind of control of the game. I don't even want to say lead, yeah. but. Thanks for that look in there, DeMario. Um, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Jeez, what, <laughs> what are you doing? doing? What are you doing? Golly, I couldn't believe it. But I love seeing Ryan that way. Mm-hmm. What? I mean, what fan? I mean, every Ohio State fan is like, hell yeah, that's my coach. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, it's amazing. But you don't put that out there, guy. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Craig, underdog uh, mentality. You know a thing or two about it. Uh, you know, I think it just comes down to the type of player. 
right? And and every team is a collection of different types of personalities. You know, for me personally, I was never motivated any more or any less based on, you know, who we were playing, what the spread was. My my focus always changed, right? If we were playing Indiana, if we were playing somebody that we were supposed to just absolutely go out there and throttle, you know, my focus was always do what I'm supposed to do, get these young guys in as quick as possible, mm-hmm. right? That that was how I would grade myself, our offensive performance. You know, do we have 30-plus points in the first half, which was a – very difficult thing to do back in the day, let me tell you. It wasn't you. as common as it is now. <laughs> but, yeah. no. you know, but, you know, did we do what we were supposed to do, which is beat somebody handily, get these young guys some reps? And then you start getting later in the year, you start getting into November, you start playing Penn State, Michigan, then you play Miami. Obviously a completely different focus. But there's no question that there are guys that do get that rah-rah intensity, and it makes them play better. Mm-hmm. There's no question about that. And, uh, you know, when you look at this game on Friday – I think Justin just said it best. If we got to talk about being motivated, if we got to talk about a level of intensity, if we got to talk about these guys having energy Friday night, we got a problem. Right. That's not going to be the case. I'm not a kind of guy that gets rah rah fired up, and I'm pissed off about what Dabo Sweeney <laughs> is saying right now. So, you know, if I was in that locker room, I would be mentally in my head, I'm not going to lie to you, I would be having to convince myself after we beat Clemson, that I don't go to whoever's got the camera and say, suck it, Dabo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. And, and that, like, I'm a pretty reserved guy. But that would be, you know, and that, that's me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, intensity level, excitement, um, you know, it's, it's, it's being smart and playing focused through that that I think is going to make the difference. You know, if they can do that, uh, I think you're going to see a great yeah, football game Friday night. you got to take that excitement. And quarterbacks, we're, you know, we're – Usually more even keeled, but you get those defensive guys; they'll get riled up, right? I was a riled up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. you you get riled up. We're hunting. The problem there is you get too riled up, right? I got to go make that play. When no, you need to play this. Mm -hmm. You know, you you need to do your job, not be the the hero. Don't get lost in the sauce. Yeah, Yeah. yeah, right. So I mean, that might be something that you have to watch out for. But I know those defensive guys are going to be hooting and hollering. (laughs) They're they're going to be pumped up, ready to rock, just based off of. But they still got to play their assignments. Yeah, and that's yeah, what I'm I saying. Mean, that's you got to do it to, yeah, the focus, still yeah, to, play. to what you were saying. Yeah, it's the focus of, all right, yeah, I am pumped up, jacked, but I got to the like, yeah, you Controlled chaos. Yes. Controlled chaos. Contro- you it's just very can't very lose nice. the controlled part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, it's it's that time. We know what Nicole predicted. She's got Ohio State winning on mm. Friday night. What was her score? 29-23. 29-23. Yeah. Uh, you know, she she's been good at it this year. She picked it on purpose, of course. She's got her methods. Uh, she's got the Buckeyes winning. So who who needs to make uh, – 29 is a tough one to make. Oh, that's she's, an interesting she's come close. number. She's had some – That's an some, interesting number. That's a some, tough one to make. She's had some different numbers this year, and they've come close, yeah. a couple of them. Who is somebody that needs to make that uh, big impact for Ohio State against Clemson, and what is the score mm. going to be in the Sugar Bowl? So Mike. can I pick two people? Oh, yeah, Schlage's not oh, here. Oh, yeah, don't worry about us. Oh. We won't pick anybody. <laughs> I was about to say. I know <laughs> I mean, one Schlegel of them is would take the whole else's. team. I think, that, I think a, a pretty obvious one is Trey Sermon. Yeah. Yeah. He has to be able to do something. He has to look the way he looked the last two weeks. Okay, you know, 300-something yards is ridiculous. I don't know if you'll be able to do that against Clemson, but I want to see him running as hard mm-hmm. as he did and finding those gaps and rolling oh, off a block. Running rolling hard. Off, running hard. Jumping over people at the end of tough runs. Like, I mean, the kid was out of control. We need to see that from him. Mm-hmm. And that if he comes in with that kind of same mentality, everything else will work itself out. And then the other person, I would say, I mean, take your pick, Haskell Garrett or Tommy Togiai. Mm-hmm. Someone's got to stop Etienne. Mm-hmm. That D-line has to come to play, and the interior of that D-line uh, is, the, is where – the running game lives or dies. So I think both of those guys are capable of having, or when it comes to Haskell Garrett and yeah. Tommy Togia, I think both of those guys are capable of having a monster game. For both of them, this is those games, this is the game where you need to show up. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It's great that you had a good game against Penn State. Young man, you got to come out against Clemson. Mm-hmm. And so on top of that, those guys will both have an opportunity to pressure Trevor Lawrence. I think this interior D line is going to be vital to our success. Yeah, I was going to say, I think getting pressure. On Lawrence in the past game, without having to bring the pressure, would be mm-hmm. even even bigger uh, of a of a plus for, yeah. for those guys. Um, that's good. I, oh, I, yeah, I go for it. Score. I oh my yeah, score. score. My bad. My uh, bad. Forty. I'm gonna say forty-five Ohio State, and then I'll I'll go to thirty-nine Clemson. 
We got maybe four. I can't wait to watch this football game. Five, man. <laughs> I think it's going to be a shootout. I really I, do. I, I think you, I'm going to be in the Superdome all night. I, 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 think, I think you see some in the 30s, 40s. I, yeah. I, I think that is going to be – because I don't think Clemson's offense, although it's gotten better throughout the year, I think they're susceptible to giving up points, right? I mean, so mm-hmm. I think we will score on them. I think it will be a high-score game. I uh, I mean, to pick a player, I mean, yeah, you could go Justin Fields, and he's a play great, but I think it all starts in the trenches like it always does. I think that offensive line getting back full strength, hopefully, if everybody's there. Yep. Because those guys are the ones when they're – throwing all these different blitzes or they're doing this or that, if those guys can just say, we got this. Like, hey, Justin, you know your guy's that one. We got everybody else. You play off of him. If he comes, you do what you got to do type thing. Mm -hmm. Or in the run game, they're opening holes. I mean, I think it all just starts with those guys. And uh, I think we've seen Ryan Day come out in games like this saying, we're just – we're going to control it. We're going to run it at you and see if you can stop us. And I think that's how we come out in this game. And and then – the fireworks start happening with a lava over the top and all that good stuff once you get those people wanting to come downhill. So right. I, I, uh, I, I'm i looking for a big game out of the offensive line, and I was going to say 45, but I'll go 43 <laughs> for the sake of weird okay. numbers. Okay, weird numbers. 43 to 35. All right, we got two wins for the Buckeyes. Greg, what do you got? I'm going to follow these guys' lead and stay away from the obvious as we talk about key <laughs> players, and we've talked about Justin Fields all game. Yeah. and. And uh, it's one of the most important positions in all of sports. But I think, obviously, when we talked about Trey Sermon, um, and he was just picked. Uh, But for Justin to have a good game, Chris Olave has got to come back and play well. Mm. You know, that timing, that trust. He's got to win one-on-one matchups when we do face pressure. You know, so for me, the guy that didn't play against Northwestern, Chris Olave has got to have a big game. He's got to make some plays downfield. He's got to be that guy that can be trusted in the face of pressure, you know, to get rid of the ball quickly, beat his guy, and help Justin Fields really build back that confidence that we know he has. Uh, score, 37-35. Good Ooh. guys. Three wins for Ohio State. Keeping them in the 30s. Are you right. going to pick Clemson? Uh, no, I'm not going to pick Clemson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have the entire time that I've covered Ohio State, I've actually never picked the Buckeyes to lose. Uh, because I got here in 2012, so that's been a very <laughs> so good. you've had a good run. <laughs> I've been very yeah, successful I mean. with this approach. Okay, a couple times have been burned. Yeah. Clemson and the officials. The, the odds are in one. your favor. The odds, you know what? I've got a winning percentage of over 90 percent, so I feel really good about continuing to take the Buckeyes. But I, I legitimately believe that you know, like people are talking about all the time off and this six games, this that and other. Ohio State was just on the field with these guys. I know that Chase Young's not here. Jeff Okuda's not here. You know, a bunch of receivers aren't here. 75 guys know that they can stand on the field with Clemson, that they were the better team. They were the more physical team. I believe Ohio State, taking that talent and that motivation, will win this game. The player that I think is going to have to really step up here, I don't know yet what's really wrong with Marcus Hooker or Ronnie Hickman. They were both scratched before. They were game-time decisions in Indy. I don't know if they're back, even if they are. Josh Proctor is still going to have to have a huge game. He was on the field in key situations against Trevor Lawrence last year and missed a couple tackles <coughs> late in the game and mm-hmm. on the long touchdown run for Lawrence. I, I fully believe he's – you know, Proctor is another guy for me, like the way I talk about Sermon. He can change the game. Mm-hmm. He's going to have to. Somebody in the secondary is going to have to step up and make mm-hmm. a big play. He's the one I'm watching. Ohio State will win uh, 34-28 in this game. They are going on to the national title, and we'll talk about that one. Ooh, when it gets boy. We'll get there. Get ready for that one. But the Buckeyes are winning the Sugar Bowl, yes. and we're going to be back here next Monday for Letterman Live to talk about it. Uh, hopefully, Nicole will be back to join us. But either way, we had uh, some great insight from Craig Krenzel, Justin Zwick, Michael Bennett for Letterman Live, brought to you by Roosters. We'll see you uh, for full coverage the rest of the week of the Sugar Bowl at LettermanRoad.com. I'm just Austin Ward. Thanks for joining us. Go Bucks.